to another episode of Silent Pals Go to the Movies. This is another Throwback Thursday review, and today I'll be reviewing the movie A Kid and King Arthur's Court. And just a fair warning, there's going to be spoilers up ahead, so you've been warned. A little leaguer player is sent back into medieval times where he's given the task of saving Camelot. So let's begin with my first pro. So if you grew up in the 90s, you will recognize Thomas Ian Nicholas. He was up there with the other teen comedy action movie actors of the 90s. Before this, he was well known for his Rookie of the Year movie, in which he also played a little league baseball player. From there, he did movies and another sequel not sponsored by Disney titled A Kid in Aladdin's Palace. If we would have reviewed that one, it would have connected into the last movie as movies Disney began filming but then pulled out of. After that bump in the road, he then was in American Pie as Kevin and that's around the time his fans were now in high school or early college years. So he made a name for himself. Also, two other famous people that came out of this movie were Kate Winslet as Princess Sarah and Daniel Craig as Master Kane. Soon after this movie, they began to make themselves known in the industry. As for Kate Winslet, when I started hearing her name, it was due to Titanic. As for Daniel Craig, I began to pay attention since he was in Layer Cake and Casino Royale. But yeah, they both were in this movie and no one knew who they were back then. Next pro. So this movie played on a fab of the time which was making teens that were famous into action stars such as Blank Check, Man of the House, Jungle to Jungle, First Kid, and of course, Rookie of the Year. These were most, if not all, made by Disney. So that means that they used the popularity of teens at the time and plays a teen with big names such as comedian or someone well known in the films. So that was you being a teen in the 90s, you watching other teens taking on the world or time traveling in films. Also, now that I rewatched the film, the lingo that was used back in the 90s was hilarious and that comes from someone who used to use that lingo in school so I laugh at myself as well. And now onto my cons. The script does now show it's time. Also, it reads like an adult who wrote it was hearing his kids say these words and then he just puts it in the script. Also, why was everyone at the time infatuated with Reseda or South California? Is it because that's where a lot of people consider the lingo originated from? And the image of Valley Girl? Back to the script. There were jokes that landed with small kids, but now that I rewatched the film, these lines seem to come across with the worst timing and they have no follow-up. So some movies nowadays, let's say they start with the main character saying something in the beginning of the film that no one in that timeline understands, but then by the end of the film, the characters come to use it quite efficiently at the end. And that that's a big joke. It comes around in full circle. That might be a word, a phrase, or even an item. For example, here, Calvin gives the king some gum in the beginning of the film, but the king doesn't know what it is and looks dumb chewing it. But then maybe at the end, the gum comes in handy, so the king uses it to get out of a small jam. Or it might be a phrase that the princess keeps using wrong initially in the film, but at the end, she might use it properly and Calvin is quite impressed. And maybe even say, hey, you got it, or give her a hug or a kiss as a follow-up. These are some things that it could have made the movie better, but the movie had one-liners that now teens would call cringe and heard watching on the screen. Next con. What's up with the movie using time travel to other ages just to learn something like never give up or give it a try? Here Calvin learns to just try at the end of the film and he hits a home run. So that changed his life. I would have liked it if they would have elaborated, if they would have elaborated more on Katie and her dad, King Arthur. Who were back in this time? Are they doing a new adventure or are they just coming to say hi? It does doesn't really answer questions. So many more questions were raised. But hey, he did hit a home run and Merlin caught it in the well. Well, I guess that makes sense, said no one ever. Also, other movies kept doing this, like Black Knight with Martin Lawrence. Same thing, he goes back in time and just like Calvin, who was wearing his team uniform, Martin Lawrence goes back in time and wears the famous green hockey jersey. This always leads to what funny garment you are wearing, sir, but they ignore the shoes that he's wearing that are made of rubber and are more weird than anything and other things that are way more weird but they never address. So basically it's a way to get kids to laugh at a quick joke. Next con, how many times did they show Lord Belasco having a chance to kill Calvin without anyone knowing but he never did. Instead Calvin kind of escapes that scene by just dodging him or saying something witty and just running away. If he didn't want to kill him why even show these encounters? Okay you might say it's a Disney film. Fine then why not show accidents or traps going off to get Calvin but he's always getting away or dodging them. For example Maybe have his food poisoned by Belasco, but Calvin doesn't like the food, so he gives it to the dog. But then the dog just runs away whimpering, and Lord Belasco says, how did he know it was poison? Or maybe an arrow gets shot to his head, but before it hits, Calvin bends down to pick something up that's on the ground, something shiny, and by doing so, we hear the arrow hit over his head, and Calvin just plays like, huh, what was that sound? I mean, use the idea that Belasco wants to kill him to set it up for jokes. Maybe even have Belasco fall for one of his traps, that would get the kids really laughing. 
Next con, the Black Knight in the film, which was really Kate Winslet as Princess Sarah, why didn't they elaborate more on this? Maybe when Katie is kidnapped, the Knight teams up with Calvin to save her. Or maybe Velasco tries to kill Calvin and someone, the Black Knight, saves him, but Velasco thinks that he is dead and then takes over the kingdom. Meanwhile, the Knight trains Calvin to return to save the kingdom with the king and Katie inside of it. But this is after he is trained and we see the training montage, of course. He also finds out that the Knight is Sarah, then brings Master Kane in so the three go in, maybe save the day, kind of mix it up a bit. But in the film, we only see the knight three times. Once in the beginning, once in the middle, bringing food to the villagers, and at the end. If the king actually saw the knight as a real threat, why didn't he just order them to attack him when he was there at present at the tournament? It just doesn't make sense. But hey, if Calvin can be able to pull out a CD player and use the laser as a weapon and also play music in the form of a battle combat, also actually, can someone explain that to me? How did Velasco lose that fight? Or how was this a fight even at the beginning? I still don't understand that scene or am I overthinking things. But back to the knight. I wish they would elaborate more on that character to tie in Kate Winslet's character and make it more believable. So my grade for this film is going to be a 5.5 out of 10. I grew up with these sort of movies, but now that I rewatch them, I feel nothing but cringe. I mean, there are some parts that would have been made more interesting and could have added more jokes. That actually would land not just one-liners. The Black Knight's character was never developed, nor why the townspeople hate the king and why they are all suffering. We never never saw that happen, we only heard it had happened. So one thing is saying it and one thing is showing it. But hey, this is one of the bad Disney films and thus the sequel is when Disney said, hey, I'm out of this game. But that film was still made. So that does it for this review of A Kid in King Arthur's Court. Please join us next time where we're going to review Virtuosity. You know, I could have killed you just now, but what the hell, I love to play. Where's Donovan? Oh, don't worry about your friend. He's chilling out. Please like, comment, and subscribe. You can find our social media links below. And like always, keep watching movies.